I just have a rule to, not to play about any song that I couldn't have written myself that I haven't directly experienced. <laughs> oh, Papa, I am just lonesome rolling stone. So weary of being on my own. If it's only for when I sleep, I beg you, honey, on my knees, make me down a pallet on your floor. When I was about 12 years old, I started hitchhiking to Seattle every day and roaming through Pike Place Market. And I happened upon this fellow called Baby Gramps, who was playing out in the street there. And that made me really want to keep skipping school and go watch him. So I began to play guitar just so I could accompany myself because I wanted to do stuff like, like he was playing. And then in the middle of that, I met Ned Landon and, and, and we liked each other. And so I quit my job and traveled around with him. And then I sang pack up, back up with him singing folk music. Have a dry, a stranger from your door. It may be your brother and you'll never know. And I was so depressed because I sucked and everybody else was all like this pure beautiful etc etc but he said no you're not you don't suck you're just a throwback you know and then he made me all these tapes of, of 78s that he had and the reason I came down to New Orleans is because Blue Lou Barker was on one of the CDs and it was her doing Don't You Feel My Leg with Danny Barker and the Flycats and it was from a recording from 1933 with Sam Price playing the piano in New York City so I heard it and I found out she was still alive. So I was like, oh good. So I came down here and then and then I'm really glad I got to see her the last time that she played at Jazz Fest with Danny Barker. It was beautiful. I am just a lonesome rolling stone. Yeah, baby, I'm being all alone. If it's only for when I sleep, I beg you on my knees, make me down a pallet on your floor. So then I came down here and then uh, the boyfriend left and it was okay because then I started playing by myself and just doing whatever I wanted and then I ended up with a little jug band. Me and Brad first. Brad's the reason I started playing the washboard because he started not showing up because his wife didn't want him to and stuff like that. and. So I was like, man, look, I'm going to show you a monkey could do this shit. So I got a washboard for 50 cents and started playing all these different bands that he played in. And then they let me play instead of him because I was a girl. And because I didn't demand a, a portion of the money, I said, everybody in the band could just tip me how much you want. Were there many other bands playing Jug No, there wasn't anybody playing on Royal Street. When I first started, you could play on Bourbon Street until 8 o'clock. That was a pedestrian street, and Royal Street too. So there was those two spots, which is a bunch of spots, and then Jackson Square. Then, the Bourbon Street, you couldn't really do it in the daytime anymore because the bars began to complain. And then on Royal Street, for two years, they shut that down. Suddenly everything got reduced to Jackson Square, so the, now there's two spots. And the break dancers were out there, and there and Tuba Fats and his band were always had played, like right by the Pontabla, that was always Tuba Fats' spot. And then on the other side, we played. Seems like a lot of copycat shit right now, or reading the music and everything's perfect, and everybody's really super good, and I'm not saying anything like that, but everybody is really good, and it's all perfect, and you got a whole bunch of people singing about shit. They don't even know what they're talking, because they haven't ever lived through maybe anything they're singing about. So it's very nice, and it's, it's good, and it's nice for the tourists, and it's nice to see everybody doing their dance, and singing the song, and doing their stop time correctly, but I'm not moved by any of it. Because really, it shouldn't be all about, like, look at me, or we need to bring this to people, or, and how much money are we getting paid for it? Yeah, so I, will, I don't ever do a song about something I don't deeply know about. Do you think that's the way that the music has been going in New Orleans towards perfection? I think it's the way that um, human nature goes, and it just took a little longer to hit it here. Then it goes, and, and I would call it um, 
America's stampede toward mediocrity.